So welcome to the video. Today we're going to take a look at how to do a paired samples t-test on Jamovi. So we're going to use this test when we have a within participants or within subjects categorical independent variable comprised of two levels and when we have a continuous dependent variable. We'll also take a look at the assumption of this test and how to check and report that and we'll take a look at how to report the results of the pet t-test itself. So let's imagine that we're interested in the effect of some sort of treatment on levels of stress. So we can use this test to check whether stress scores differ before and after the treatment. So in this Excel file, we have the scores from 20 participants before treatment and the scores of 20 participants after treatment. So these are numbers representing their levels of stress out of 10 before and after treatment. So let's take a look at how to enter these data into Jamovi. So I'm just going to select all of these data and then click Control or Command C to copy them. And then I'll go over to Jamovi and I'll select the top left cell and I will press Command or Control V to paste the data in. Next, we can tell Jamovi what these levels of the independent variable are. So if we go up to data at the top here and then set up, and then if we select one of these, so I'm going to select A, I'm going to say that this is B4 underscore treatments. And I'm going to say that this is a continuous variable. So I'm going to use this measure type menu to select continuous. And then I'll do the same type of thing for B. So B is the data from after the treatment. So let's replace B with after underscore treatments. And we are again going to use this measure type menu to select continuous. So once we've told Jamovi what the levels of the independent variable are, we can get on to checking the assumption of this test, which is that the values representing the difference between the before and after conditions are normally distributed. So let's take a look at how to check whether that assumption has been met. So to do this, we're going to select this compute button here, and that's going to allow us to generate a new variable. And we're going to call this something like difference. And we're going to tell Jamovi that the scores in this column represent the difference between before and after treatment. So I'm going to write before underscore treatments. I'm then going to hit the minus symbol. And then I'm going to write after underscore treatments. And then I will press enter. And we can see that Jamovi generates this column here or generates these data in this column here. And these numbers represent the difference between before and after. So we can see for participant one here, they had a score of six before treatment and a score of four after treatment. So in this column, they have a value of two as six minus four equals two. And that's the same thing throughout this column. So now we just need to check whether the data in this column that we've created are normally distributed. So to do this, we can go up to analyses and then across to exploration, then down to descriptors. We can then transfer this difference variable that we've created to the variables box by clicking this arrow. And then if we go down to statistics here, we can select the Shapiro Wilk option, which is a normality test. So if we take a look at the Shapiro Wilk P part of the table, we want to see that the value here is above 0 0.05, as this indicates that the data are normally distributed. So in this case, we have a value of 0.114. Is this, as this value is above 0 0.05, we can conclude that the difference between the before and treatment conditions is normally distributed. So once we've checked that assumption, we can get on to running the pair t-test itself. So to do this, let's go up to t-tests and then down to paired samples t-test. And then we're going to transfer the before treatment bits over here and then the after treatment bits over here as well next to it. We've already got students test selected here. We can also check this effect size box and this descriptors box. And if we take a look at the results, we can see that we have a mean value of 6.9 before treatment and a mean value of 4.25 after treatment. So we know that the stress scores were lower after treatment compared to before. 
and we can check this paired samples t-test part of the table to see whether that difference is significant. So specifically, if we focus on this p value here, we can see that this is below 0.05 as it's below 0.001, indicating that there was a significant difference between the before and after treatment conditions. So that's how we interpret the results of the test. Let's take a look at how to write up those results. So we started off by just saying what type of tests we did and what the variables were. So I said a paired samples t-test was conducted to compare stress scores before and after the intervention or treatment. And I've then reported the results of the assumption check that we completed. So I said a Shapiro-Wilk test indicated that the differences between the conditions were normally distributed. And I've entered some statistics here. So we've got W equals 0.92. So that comes from this descriptive table here. We've got this Shapiro-Wilk W row in this table. And we've got the value of 0.923 here. So that's what we have in the example results section, just rounded to two decimal places. Um, we also just have a 20 here because that's the number of participants we had in our study. And we've got a p-value of 0.114, and that's coming from this part here. So the Shapiro-Wilk p-row of this descriptive table is 0 0.114. So once we've reported the results of that assumption check, we can get on to reporting the results of the t-test itself. So we've said stress scores were significantly, missing a word here, um, higher before the intervention compared to after. So before the intervention, we have a mean of 0 0.690 and a standard deviation of 1.25. And that's coming from this descriptive table down here. So before treatment, mean 6.90, standard deviation 1.25 and then we've got compared to after so the after mean 4.25 standard deviation 1.02 that's coming from this after treatment bit here 4.25 for the mean and 1.02 for the standard deviation so once we've reported those descriptive statistics we can report the results of the t-test itself so we've got t equals minus 8.11 that is coming from this paired samples t-test table and we've got the statistic column here so we've got the uh, point um, we've got 8.11 here so we don't know this don't know where this minus symbol has come from and we've got 19 here that is coming from this degrees of freedom or df column here that's that value of 19 and we've got p is less than 0.001 and that's what we have reported here. So finally, I've reported this Cohen's d-value. So I've said that d is 1.81, and that is coming from this effect size column of this paired samples t-test table. And so I've described that value as representing a large effect. So I've said the effect size was large, and that is based on commonly used thresholds for describing effect sizes as very small, small, medium, or large. So if we take a look at this note here, this isn't part of the results, but this just helps us to interpret this value here. So we've got values between 0 and 0 0.2 represent very small effects. Values between 0.2 and 0.5 represent small effects. Values between 0.5 and 0.8 represent medium effects. And values above 0.8 represent large effects. So this value here is obviously above 0.8, suggesting that we had a large effect. So that's essentially it for the paired samples t-test on Jamovi. Hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, just let me know in a comment and I will try to get back to you. Thank you for watching. See you next time.